Electricity dominates our lives, the most prevalent form of energy. To understand it, we have to dig a little and get very small. Atoms have electrons flying around them at incredible speeds. By creating a force to drive the electrons from one atom to another, you also release energy and in effect create electricity. Don't get alarmed that you're about to get a lecture in electrical physics, you're not. But having a basic understanding of electricity can help you deal with it. The problem is, since it's invisible, it's good to compare it to something we're all familiar with and which is very visible, water. Electricity and water behave a lot alike. These two jugs each have water in them. But notice that one has a lot more than the other. When we connect a tube to them, notice how the pull of gravity creates pressure, forcing the water from the fuller jug to flow into the other jug. When the two jugs have equal amounts of water, the flow stops. That's where the expression, water seeks its own level, comes from. With this image fresh in mind, let's see how electricity works in the same way. Think of a battery as having two compartments, each one like the water jugs. Only here, the fuller side has lots of electrons, and the less full side has only a small number of electrons. I can touch both terminals of the battery, but nothing happens, because like the water jugs, something has to connect the two ends. Only now, instead of a tube, we're making the connection with a metal wire. And like the water, the negatively charged electrons flow toward the other side. When we put something like a bulb between the battery terminals, the flow of electrons puts electricity to work, lighting the bulb. The material in the bulb resists the flow of the electrons through it. This resistance produces heat, and in this case, light. And we'll be returning to this term in a few minutes. Remember how the water stopped flowing when the levels evened out? Same thing here. When the flow of electrons stop, the flashlight dims and soon goes dead. Let's use water again to help understand some other electrical terms. Now there's nothing coming out of this hose, but there is water and pressure inside. When I open the valve, the force of that pressure releases a spray of water. A wire is similar. The force which causes electrons to flow is called voltage. And like water, the greater the pressure pushing electricity through a line, the higher the voltage. In water terms, the pressure is measured in pounds per square inch. With electricity, pressure is measured in volts. How much water are we using with this hose? Well, that would be measured at how many gallons per minute we'd be using, with a maximum if we opened it up full blast. With electricity, the rate of flow or current is also measured. It's called amperes or amps. And like water, there are only so many amps we can draw through this wire at full capacity. Let's take this example one step further just to make sure it's clear standard drinking straw. If I sip normally, I get so much water. But if I use a much wider straw, I get a lot more water with less effort. As with the straws and water, thinner wire has more resistance, which limits how much current can move through it, while a much thicker wire with less resistance can carry much higher currents. Let's examine the light bulb again and shed some light on how resistance affects the flow of electricity. Let's create a light bulb. Two wires connect to a metal conductor, a filament, made of a metal like tungsten. This filament limits or resists the amount of current passing through it, producing heat and light without burning up. Ceramic and glass also make up the light bulb but unlike the filament, almost totally resist current passing through them and insulate the materials inside. When measured, how much a material resists the flow of current is expressed as ohms. So the filament with low resistance has a low number, but the ceramic and glass surrounding it have an extremely high resistance. Since resistance is the property of materials to resist the flow of electric current, Everything in our environment is affected, even air. Materials which resist current very well are called insulators, and those which let current pass easily are called conductors. 
Air is a good insulator, and as we mentioned, glass is a good insulator, as are plastic and paper. On the other hand, most metals, especially some like copper and aluminum, are good conductors. Water is also an excellent conductor, which is why using electrical appliances near it requires great caution. Let's review some of the basic properties of electricity before moving on. Match the following terms to their definitions. Voltage is the measurement of electrical force or pressure. Amperes is the measurement of electrical current. Resistance is the property of a material to inhibit the flow of current. Ohms represents a numerical value relating to the level of resistance. Which of these factors affects the amount of resistance in an electric circuit? Humidity, diameter, altitude. The diameter, or size of a wire, determines its resistance. The larger the diameter, the more current it can carry.